If you're like me, audio has always been an afterthought when you pull out your camera. Now, I know that you're not supposed to say that, but let's face it, it's easier to get excited about a lens flare or composition than it is about clean audio. So when I heard about 32-bit floating point audio being the savior of guys like me and having to never set audio levels again, of course I was gonna check it out. This is not gonna be an audiophile's dream. This is going to be a test for a guy like me to see if 32-bit floating point audio is really the savior that it sounds like it could be and what it's good at, what it's not good at, and how it performs in different situations. So I'm gonna try out this Zoom F3 in a whole bunch of different environments, like for instance, this quiet cabin in the woods. Or for instance, in an indie car paddock. Or in a quiet campsite. Or in the middle of an airport terminal waiting on a flight. If 32-bit floating point audio is as good as people are suggesting, you might not need to set audio levels ever again. But could this one little advancement in audio technology really be that powerful? Well, that's what I'm gonna try and find out. So first, let's talk about what 32-bit float actually is. Well, it lets you record the entire range of what you would already be getting. This is gonna help people avoid clipping, not necessarily cleaner audio, but audio that doesn't worry about getting blown out. The bit depth of audio describes the amount of unique volumes that a single piece of audio can record. If you do a lot of recording, you already know about 24-bit audio and 16-bit audio, the kind of audio found on CDs. Well, 32-bit audio can resolve over 1,500 decibels. This is why you don't need to set levels with 32-bit audio. I'm just listening to the world knowing when there might be a noise that I'm gonna have to contend with, like a live band and knowing that I have to be a little bit louder to talk over that, the noise is still gonna be there. The noise is always gonna be there. So 32-bit floating point audio isn't necessarily gonna help you in an environment as noisy as this. So is 32-bit audio going to make your audio cleaner? No. Think of 32-bit audio as not better colors to paint with, but a wider canvas to paint on. So it's not about what kind of audio you're recording, it's about where you're placing that mic. The benefit of 32-bit audio is that that 1500 decibels that we talked about earlier is mathematically what's possible, but not what's physically possible. On Earth, we can't even get to 200 decibels because at a certain point, the audio cannot travel through the air. So if the explosion of Krakatoa can still be captured on this recorder, you're not gonna have to worry about clipping anytime soon. While recording land speed cars in Bonneville, I was able to go back and forth from recording interviews with drivers sitting in cars to their engines starting up without having to worry about my audio levels. The next time we go racing, can you guys maybe think about boats? Or something, I don't know. Something not so hot, messy. So this is the 32-bit audio recorder that I'm using, the Zoom F3. Right off the bat, it goes to show you that good audio can be captured in a very, very small package. I'm recording 32-bit floating point audio on the recorder with stereo out going directly to the camera for easy sync. Take it easy. Take it easy. You see that first black bag? You're gonna start hooking up. You can nail it, dude. It's good down there. All right. Thank good luck. Thanks, man. One of the biggest things that I've seen as a major advantage is that the way it spits out audio to a 24-bit recorder or a 16-bit recorder is just as impressive as the 32-bit floating point audio itself. A lot of my testing was done with a 24-bit out going to my camera, and I ended up using that audio for a lot of clips in this video, even some of the ones with loud engines or loud music. Y'all make some noise for Mr. Choice Yates right there, hell yeah! 
So we've talked a lot about the 32-bit part of 32-bit floating point audio. What is the floating point bit? Floating point audio, as opposed to fixed point audio, describes where the 0 dB point is in that audio. Basically, if you were going to give your audio recording some kind of standard to start with, where is that standard? With fixed point audio, that 0 dB is at the top of your range, so you might have a lot of latitude in audio, but where you're setting your levels is usually right next to that clipping point of 0 dB. Floating point audio has latitude above where you're setting your 0 dB, so with 1500 decibels of range, you have about 700 above and 700 below. Again, not only way more than you'll ever need, but way more than is physically possible in Earth's atmosphere. But let's not forget that 32-bit floating point audio is a tool just like anything else. Just like on a camera, the dynamic range is only useful if you are making good use of it. 32-bit audio does give you a large amount of post flexibility, however. And because there's almost no way that you can screw up the settings when recording that uncompressed 32-bit signal, it is an added benefit for someone who doesn't take the time to focus on audio on location or on set. As for the Zoom F3, it's a compact little device that I was able to have on the side of my GH6 and was able to function without issue. If you're using a Sony or Panasonic mirrorless camera and using that onboard XLR handle that passes audio through the hot shoe, this honestly might be a better option because you get the safety of a backup record and you get the wider dynamic range. It can also be plugged into a Mac or PC and be used as a MIDI device passing audio over USB. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now. But this isn't the only 32-bit floating point audio device that has hit the market recently. And pretty soon, this is going to be an option in just about everything. For me, I think this is my new solution for audio, but my needs for audio are pretty minimal. So this only takes you so far. How far do you want to go? I think that's the real question. What is the level of quality that you need? What is the level of dedication that you are willing to have to getting good audio? If you want to try out the array of new devices that are supporting 32-bit floating point audio, you can check out our store, hotrodcameras.com. Or if you're in the LA area, you can come on down to Burbank and visit us in person.